When the AV Club travels, we always make time to visit pop culture landmarks. If something memorable happened in the world of film, TV, books, or music, we want to go there. We're not just tourists, we're pop pilgrims. We are now on our way over to the City Lights bookstore. People that we now consider part of the canon of American literature, like Jack Kerouac, Allen Ginsberg, City Lights was the one that published their books. They were the only ones that sold their books at first. A landmark institution in the history of the changes that took place in America. Let's start. Tell me about this place. Well, it was founded in 1953 by Lawrence Ferlinghetti, and it was modeled after the European bookstores, which had a publishing house as well as a bookstore in the same operation. Uh -huh. Lawrence's partner was a guy by the name of Peter D. Martin. And Peter D. Martin was mostly interested in the journal. Ferlinghetti really had a broader vision, which was to create a publishing house that issued forth quality paperbacks. Hardcovers were very expensive. Yeah. And the great thing about a paperback is that, you know, you didn't have to spend a week's worth of wages on it. He wanted to make something that just some kid would come in and with an allowance money be able to pick up mm -hmm. and open up and just like and inspire. He wanted to inspire a generation of people to look at poetry differently. So the Howl was published as the Pocket Poet series. Yeah. And then what were the how did it wind up in court? What happened? It was the San Francisco Police Department. It was looked at and they, they figured that they could charge Ferlinghetti with obscenity. Because because there were words that uh, were questionable in the larger uh, scale vernacular, words, yeah. okay, so, you know, you, certain four-letter words, and also but portrayals of human behavior and, and outlook, and the outlook was basically that something had gone wrong with America, mm -hmm. and I think that was the real reason. Mm -hmm. It wasn't so much the four-letter words. The cop, did they come and arrest, they arrested him for pub, they, being the publisher? They put the handcuffs on both Ferlinghetti and the manager at the time, Shig Morat. They are let out on bail shortly thereafter. I mean, someone made a mistake, actually. They thought they could kind of quell City Lights by, you know, twisting their arm a little bit. And mm -hmm. they realized that behind City Lights was, you know, the entire community. And not only that, but, you know, a, a national community of not just writers, uh -huh. but uh, the public itself. But you know, so much is made of the Beats, and really what we have to understand is that there's a longer continuum that they're simply a part of. Mm -hmm. After the Beats came the movements of the 60s, later the punk rock movement, and the seller of City Lights, Search and Destroy, which is a very, very influential punk rock journal, was founded right here. Uh -huh. Later the Zine Explosion. Um, so all kinds of things happen here. First and foremost, we're a cultural center. Okay. And this is really the nexus where the literary and the political meet. Uh -huh. And so we're, our job is to keep the avant-garde alive. I would come right here. I would sit in these very chairs. Re these very chairs? They're the same chairs? Po the post chair has been here forever, for sure. So you would And come I bought Flowers of Evil, which is right here. Uh, and it changed my life. How did it change your life? Baudelaire spoke to the kind of adolescent I was, which was the world is made of shit and everyone is behaving badly but I would rather gaze at the moon and a pretty woman than deal with the lies of a tidy life. And I thought, yeah, that's what I'm at, Totes. Baudelaire. My goats. It's one of the fun things to come here is to watch other people get radicalized and transformed. And you, I mean, you see that every time you come in here. You what see is? young people taking a book off the shelf and you think, it's about to happen. It's like any other radicalizing cultural experience. You know, it's when someone says, I heard the Velvet Underground were pretty good, maybe I'll try this record with a banana on it. Yeah. It feels like that. I think what best exemplifies the mission here is something that happened to me a few years ago when I first started working here. A middle-aged woman approached me as I was working in the stacks, straightening shelves, and she said, uh, you know, would you help me out? Uh, my granddaughter's with me, and uh, I need to put together a reading list for her. So I walked over, and here's this 16-year-old, spiky hair, pierced nose, tattoos, shy as ever. Mm -hmm. He couldn't even look me in the eye. And I put together this list of, you know, everything from Hannah Arendt to Jorge Bataille, a broad list of stuff. A few years go by, and I'm on my lunch break, and I'm about to leave the store, and this beautifully coiffed woman walks up to me, and the first thing I think is, uh-oh, she's going to serve me a summons. <laughs> and uh, she walks up, and she goes, are you Peter? And I said, yeah. And she says, oh. She goes, um, I'd like to thank you. And I'm just puzzled, just staring at her, going, what is this? And she says, uh, you put together a reading list for me many years ago, which changed my life. 
and I have come back and I have a reading list now of my own and would you help me find these books? She goes, I'm in a master's program and I want to become a teacher. That's our mission.